Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Um, we're reading today from the book Habakkuk. So um, please open your Bibles and turn to Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 18 to 20. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 18 to 20. So find Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 18 to 20. And here we read. What good is an idol carved by man or a cast image that deceives you? How foolish to trust in your own creation, a God that can't even talk. <clears throat> what sorrow awaits you who say to wooden idols, wake up and save us. To speechless stone images you say, rise up and teach us. Can an idol tell you what to do? They may be overlaid with gold and silver, but they are lifeless inside. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. God bless the reading of this word. God versus idols. God, that's our title for today. God versus idols. Now a little bit of background here. Um, Habakkuk is a prophet of Judah who's serving God around 612 to 599 BC, around about 600, um, six, around about 600 BC. And uh, Habakkuk has a dialogue here, um, or if you want to call it, it's a complaint. Sometimes it's called a complaint, um, like a lamentation or a complaint he brings before God. And uh, that complaint is basically... Um, why does it seem that um, you know the wicked prosper, and why why is idolatry rampant? And you know, uh, Lord God, why are you doing nothing about it? Kind of like in that sense, right? So um, I encourage you to read um, read uh, this book for yourself because it's a lot of uh, answers a lot of questions that we have uh, today, especially like as believers, foremost, right? So God answers the prophet. So read the entire book yourself. It's not long and see how it all turns out. It's, it's amazing. It's, re it's worth it. Um, so the main challenge here is one that we deal with today as well. And uh, that's our topic. So what do, why does it look like um, people get away with evil and... Um, and engaging in idolatry, and God appears to do nothing about it. So in verse 18, um, we see here in our passage that um, people create their own gods with a small g, or idols, right? Gods. What are idols? What are idols? What is idolatry? All right, so here I encourage you to Think about what idolatry is, right? Idolatry can be a whole bunch of things. But let the Bible uh, tell us a bit more. Um, so turn to Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 9 to 20. Let's go back in the Bible a little bit. Turn to Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 9 to 20. Okay, so see that you can find that passage. <laughs> and let's read along. Let's read together. How foolish are those who manufacture idols. These pride, prized objects are really worthless. The people who worship idols don't know this, so they are all put to shame. Who but a fool would make his own god, an idol that cannot help him one bit? All who worship idols will be disgraced. Along with all these craftsmen, mere humans, who claim they can make a god, they may all stand together, but they will stand in terror and shame. The blacksmith stands at his forge to make a sharp tool, pounding and shaping it with all his might. His work makes him hungry and weak. It makes him thirsty and faint. Then the woodcarver measures a block of wood and draws a pattern on it. He works with chisel and plane and carves it into a human figure. He gives it human beauty and, it, and puts it in a little shrine. He cuts down cedars. 
He selects the cypress and the oak. He plants the pine in the forest to be nourished by the rain. Then he uses part of the wood to make a fire. With it, he warms himself and bakes his bread. Then, yes, it's true. He takes the rest of it and makes himself a god to worship. He makes an idol and bows down in front of it. He burns part of the tree to roast his meat and to keep himself warm. He says, ah, that fire feels good. Then he takes what's left and makes this god a carved idol. He falls down in front of it, worshipping and praying to it. Rescue me, he says, you are my god. Such stupidity and ignorance. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut and they cannot think. The person who made the idol never stops to reflect. Why, it's just a block of wood. I burned half of it for heat and used it to bake my bread and roast my meat. How can the rest of it be a god? Should I bow down to worship a piece of wood? The poor deluded fool feeds on ashes. He trusts something that can't help him at all. Yet he cannot bring himself to ask, Is this idol that I'm holding in my hand a lie? God bless William Earth's word. So this is a very stern and firm <coughs> warning um, when we talk about God versus idols. So um, we look at this and we read through it. I encourage you to read through that. And uh, sometimes people uh, make turn other things into idols. Uh, that can be uh, objects, people, relationships, uh, the striving for wealth, power, uh, fame, fortune, whatever it is other than God or instead of God. That's basically an idol. So this is quite a strong passage. And I encourage you to revisit it and um, to um, remind yourself of this. So in verse 19, we read, what sorrow awaits you. And what that means is, that means not being saved. In other words, having a person having no salvation. And in verse 20, we see the Lord God stands above all man-made things. Um, this includes idols. So thinking about God, um, idols and idolatry, what does this mean for you? And for me, I mean, we're all surrounded by idols, right? Whatever, they, whatever that may be. So um, idolatry is, is foolishness. It's a lack of common sense. Um, it's misplaced hope into an object, a thing, or even a, another person. And it, it invites Satan uh, into a person's life, right? Why? Well, because people are not worshiping God, our Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ, as God in the flesh. And so, by default, Satan takes over. And then, that's pretty much it. Some people say, oh, Satan doesn't exist, and hell doesn't exist. Well, yes, he is uh, in existence still, Satan as the devil. Um, until Judgment Day, uh, he will be around. But then, uh, on Judgment Day, he will be no longer. And his goal is to, um, to deceive, to lie to people, to um, yeah, to see if people believing even like as this example we just saw in Isaiah, that something is a block of wood is a god with a small g, it's not a Lord God, but a god, but it's nothing. Uh, that's not where God. That's not God, right? So um, um, in the end, idolatry is important, a big one. Uh, it leads to eternal separation from God. And so uh, Paul helps us here in the New Testament in 2 Thessalonians 1, ver chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. In flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus, they will be punished with eternal destruction, forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. God bless you, my word. So it's, it, is, it is rebellion, basically. It's rebellion against God. Idolatry is rebellion against God and denying Jesus Christ as God in the flesh. That's the, um, what Jesus talks about, the broad path 
that leads to hell. I, I would encourage you uh, turn to Matthew, uh, read with me, Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Jesus says, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. God bless reading of his word. What is the narrow gate? Who is the narrow gate? Our Lord Jesus, right. So highlight this. This is one verse you want to highlight. The narrow, narrow gate. How narrow is the narrow gate? Well, as Jesus says here, it's pretty narrow, right? So, again, this is a big one. God does not send people to hell, right? Or people who are, who are worshiping any other, anything other, or anybody other than Christ, uh, people send themselves to hell. Those who are, you know, engaged and who, who, who do not turn away from idolatry with a repentant heart and turn to Jesus. Jesus warns us, again, you have your Bible open. Um, Jesus warns us in John chapter 3, verses 16 to 20. This is going to be our closing when we talk about God versus idols. So John, a, a closing passage here. John chapter 3, verses 16 to 20. Let's read. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. God bless you in this word. So may we all, may all of us turn away from idols, turn to the light, enter through the narrow gate, our Lord Jesus Christ, and um, be eternally joined with him both now and forever. May God bless you and keep you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>